Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, my name is Michelle, and I'm the administrator of the Jeffrey Wolf Green Association of Evolutionary Astrologers. And I'm here today with Jordan Smith, the voice and astrologer behind Nonconformist Conscience, the website, blog, and YouTube channel, and a fellow evolutionary astrologer. Now, many of you may know Jordan already. She joined us last year for the EA online conference teaching, co-teaching um, a beautiful segment on Lilith. And we are coming back with Jordan again this time to explore the dynamics around um, the asteroid Cassandra. Um, and I was going to say, you know, one of the things that I really appreciate about you, Jordan, and something I've known about you since the very first time we met, like since the very beginning, is that you have a way of really discovering these asteroid goddesses, integrating them into your life and practice as an astrologer. Um, and I'm so curious to hear from you how you found your way to Cassandra. Well, that's a great question. I was actually on the message board let me think about this. Actually, this was through a conversation with Stacy Pizzura like a couple of years ago. Um, we were just like jamming out on the phone, I think, and um, talking about life. And she actually brought up Cassandra. We were talking about asteroids and I was telling her about something going on in my life. And she was like, I feel like Cassandra, she was like, I don't know a lot, but I feel like your Cassandra is really telling. And so it went like it led me down this rabbit hole. And then on the message board last year, I want to say I was looking at um, Cher Heights chart. And after I had learned about who she was and I saw her Cassandra, it was the first thing that stuck out to me. And so it made me go down a uh, a rabbit hole of starting to really understand and correlate this and other people's charts. I started getting clients who had this dynamic of needing to reclaim their voice and understand themselves and reintegrate their own inner knowledge. And they would tell me this story about their life and then their Cassandra would be the first thing that I saw. And so it, I started to just in true astrological fashion observe and correlate and deepen my practice um, and started really looking at her through transits. Like it was pretty mind blowing when I actually went back and I looked at prior transits, like the Me Too movement or different things. And like, there was always a really prominent Cassandra. So to me, there's this resurgence of women, especially women reclaiming their voice and their own inner knowledge and relationship to themselves. And I think that we see it in the collective right now as well. So Oh, absolutely. And where is she now in terms of transiting Cassandra? She's at 22 Capricorn. So <laughs> yeah, she's, um, you know, trining uh, the sun and having all types of dynamics go on right now. I think a lot of people are utilizing that to practice and like pulling in the Virgo of how do I restructure the way I live by just speaking my truth, you know? So yeah. And then having to practice it. <laughs> just, just to say that like, then she's sitting on my South node, squaring my Saturn and our conversation from this morning, just totally yeah. so much sense now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Welcome Cassandra. Um, you know, my familiarity with her is only through the book that I, um, you know, Cassandra Speaks, which yep. is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, I have it. I love it. Yeah, I have it too. And it's like this, this archetype of the mythological feminine that has, you know, lost or repressed their voice. Mm -hmm. um, is fascinating and in your lecture for the conference you're going to be integrating her with mercury and the nodes of mercury or what how are you working yeah so when you look at cassandra 
you really want to look at not just the physical asteroid to look at the complex that's going on in someone's chart, but of course the nodal axis of hers. But then so much of her underbelly, right? Like the core of who she is. Yeah, it's about reclaiming your voice. So there's a need to look at Mercury and its nodes, but also it's about reclaiming your inner knowledge and your own inner voice. And so how that, when you do that, it impacts your own relationship to self. And so pulling in Venus and her nodes to really look at this in a, in a, a total way. Hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, from a transit perspective too, this means Cassandra in Capricorn is squaring um, Chiron in Aries. Yep. And also squaring the south node of Venus, which is at 23 degrees Libra. Mm -hmm. um, and Venus is in Libra. And I often think of Venus as like that aspect of listening and li listening from the perspective of this like reciprocity, right? We mm -hmm give and receive through listening but you know the shadow of both Capricorn and Libra I think are those capacities in which where we can suppress our needs or suppress through conditioning um and what have you found with Cassandra relative to her position in people's natal charts when you're observing her what tell us more about that so <clears throat> I'm going to give, well, I can speak to a few things dealing with that. Usually there is a story around not being heard or believed and the suppression of voice for sure um, because of the projections of others. And so there, I have had clients numerous times come in and they want to express themselves to someone and they're terrified to do it. They, and usually their Cassandra is retrograde. And then if you look at it in tandem with the person that they're afraid to, to talk to or express themselves with, there is usually some type of story that goes on with that. Um, and then what I typically see is I see it in some men's charts, but it's more prominent in women's, which makes sense because of the nature of the patriarchy you know and women suppressing their voices abandoning themselves in order to just survive throughout you know eons um but the chart examples that i'm using are two of my clients and i feel like they really demonstrate the cassandra archetype in two different ways like one has become an activist um, and it's through the dynamics that she's experienced and her not being heard or listened to when speaking out that she finally was like, I'm going to make a 501C and I'm going to do this myself and I'm going to start, you know, just implementing it. And her chart is really interesting. And the things that she is an activist about are really indicative of her chart. Um, murder, murder of indigenous women. Um, speaking, and she has a story around that not being heard whenever her friend went missing, um, and it's right there on her chart. And then, um, the other chart example I'm using is another client who experienced a lot of sexual assault growing up within her own family system and chose to speak up about it. And then what she, um, how she used that instance as a catalyst for these you know, uh, dynamics dealing with, with Cassandra and also her own, both of these ladies have their bottom line of Pluto being filtered into this. And you can just see it like, oh my gosh, this is helping them get to this bottom line and, you know, and, or the polarity point of what this is actually entailing for their core evolutionary growth. Mm -hmm. So with Cassandra, you'll see a lot of usually women who are speaking up about sexual violence or um, speaking up for the underdog is kind of a Virgo dynamic, which makes sense because you're pulling in Mercury, right? So kind of wanting to speak up for the underdog or speaking up for those that um, are viewed as less than within social structures. And then, you know, having um, to combat 
people not believing them because what typically ends up happening with Cassandra is I see this more in people who are in the individuated stages whatever it is that they're speaking to actually has the ability to help the consensus move forward it's some type of knowledge that they have around speaking the truth about something some people it is more a prophetic kind of dynamic right um but ultimately it's challenging the status quo and so there's a often a lot of um, pushback, scapegoating or deflection or projection put on these people. And so you can see whenever they're really utilizing. Oh no. They're just blazing a path, no matter what. They they say what you want about me, but I'm gonna keep there doing this. This is, you know, um, it's important. And right. so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's powerful. You just made me think there's, um, I've been really fascinated with the whole um, spiritual prophetess or, um, you know, I find, I find a lot of women in evangelical religions who are coming forward as like prophets, which from a very typical patriarchal lens is actually a contradiction to the biblical ways of yes right women were not prophets mm -mm. and in fact it was forbidden for women to be or for people to be oracles or diviners but mm -hmm. there's a movement of um it seems mostly black evangelical women who are coming out as prophets mm -hmm. <laughs> on youtube and i love listening to them i'm fascinated by the things that they share That's Perfect it, for Capricorn, like yeah, Cassandra. A Capricorn Cassandra. Yeah. And, you know, they're quoting scripture and they're channeling the Holy Spirit and they're doing all, they're doing it all, right? So they're challenging the structures within around the limitations that have been imposed around gender constructs, even. And they literally will call themselves like boss women, you know, like it's, mm -hmm. I just, I love it in such a way because we can think that the reclaiming of the voice is only, you know, speaking out against something, mm -hmm. right? But the way it, from the Capricorn perspective, it can be really speaking within the structures of something in a way that defies the structure itself. Yes. Yeah. And um wow, so I would love to <laughs> love to look more at that. Um are there other asteroid goddesses that you're also following and integrating into your EA work? Yeah, I use series a lot, I would say. Um I use software sign, I use Hecate sometimes but it's usually Cassandra series Lilith and software sign is what I I typically um look at beautiful um I've been finding you know I follow Lilith both the black moon point and the asteroid um and Chiriclo and mm -hmm. um, Juno I love I Juno. Great here and there, but not, um, you know, I learned a lot from Demetra George's talk last year yes. at the conference. And so for, you know, my own research as an astrologer, I think it is very similar to yours that direct experience from the chart is, you know, the most helpful way to reintegrate some of these more lost archetypes mm -hmm. not always seen and it's interesting Cassandra is also an expression of that like reclamation as you're bringing her back into the conference this year and bringing forward something that I think is so powerful for us to be able to you know I'm really looking forward to learning from you in that respect um, and I also use series. She's been squaring the nodes, you know, yes. this year, which I feel is very significant. And I just released a video um, last week about her conjunction with Pluto and Venus and Aquarius in December, which I think is, 
you know, the, one of the most significant transits of the year, probably not going to get the like big, um, <laughs> you know. It, yeah. People things. aren't. Yeah. They won't be talking about it all the time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, even looking at series, I've included her often lately. Um, oh, I, are you frozen? When me are you? Oh, you, there we go. Okay, good. Okay. Um, you were saying you've included her often lately. Yeah. And also it's all, it's hard to answer the question what goddesses I use. Cause I'm, the more I think about it, I'm like, I, I use a lot actually. Like there's, I, I love Juno as well. Lately for me, I feel like is so important. Oh, yeah. It's like, there's this need to restructure society right now and have a resurgence of natural law mm -hmm. through on the one hand looking at that resolution the south node of where extremes have played out in social structures especially around not being heard groups of people within society but on the other hand it's restructuring society by reclaiming that natural law of giving sharing and inclusion that is held within Libra, you know, as a, one of the bottom lines right now. So it's been fascinating for me to watch the things come up, you know, because that South Node, yeah, it's ruled by Venus, but so is Uranus and Taurus and, you know, the sharing of resources. So it kind of pulls into this whole dynamic and, you know, I just, yeah, I love looking at it even on a collective level, what these mean. Well, and I think if we think about it from like a Pluto perspective, the way I see all of these feminine archetypes, you know, these are aspects of soul. Mm -hmm. uh, your last year's talk was Lilith, the root of the soul, right? The root mm -hmm. of the soul. And for so many of us, we have this fragmented or fractured relationship with yes. the feminine soul. Um, and however that's caused, whether it comes from our family conditioning and really looking at mother and father and how we were raised or whether it's coming from a larger social, um, you know, or cultural context mm -hmm. in order for us to evolve, we have to reclaim those lost parts of soul. And within the framework of astrology, we also have a voice or like a narrative, I would say, maybe about the female archetypes that is predicated based on stories and mythologies that were written in a very particular way. And that had yes. effect of creating a natural oppressive system for women. Distortion, for sure. I mean, okay, even Cassandra has two um, myths oh. within yeah so there's two different myths and one is where <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> one is really painting Cassandra out to be the bad person right um and the other one is in my opinion more encompassing of the truth so one is she wouldn't she basically reneged on these sexual advances you know and so therefore she was cursed and the other myth tells a completely different story you know so it's it's just to me it's fascinating even when researching asteroids that I get interested in I like to go back and there's recently I've been diving back into research of one of the asteroids that I absolutely love and I've been getting into Frederick Nietzsche's like works where he was talking about this and he's coming from a very Christian point of view, but then he's trying to, you can see that that was like someone who was really objectifying these dynamics of like, but actually how would this play out? What does this mean? And trying to get to the bottom line of it. So I feel like even when you're researching asteroids, not even just through um, observing and correlating in someone's chart whenever you get into other people's perspectives about an archetype of a myth 
it becomes really rich and there's always like some um I don't know some string that that stays interwoven it's like this this little bit of truth is still staying in there you know what I'm saying and it's like you just have to kind of follow these breadcrumbs as you go so I don't know I hope that makes sense but it's something that I'm fascinated by yeah, me as well. And it reminds me of a story my painting teacher told, you know, that, um, for example, Venus, the most common image of her is this painting by Botticelli, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there was a very patriarchal um, and distortion that he was operating with. He had relationships yeah. with underage women. He, you know, it was this like objectification of the feminine that was yes. created this image, which is famously accepted as her image. And what she described that having the effect of for women or for painters or for women who paint the feminine, especially, is that we there's a particular way in which we've been um, conditioned to see the image of the feminine that is unconscious to us on a certain level because we were not the creators of our own image. And in order to actually be able to paint freely as ourselves, we have to go through a process which she guides in her painting, you know, um, her painting program to reclaim our own image. And for me, that has also met an immense resistance that I have mm -hmm. to painting the feminine, right? And I've just been working with that, you know, the last couple of years in my painting practice. And similarly, I have had that relationship to um, when I was a child, you know, being told by my mother that I sang off key and that I didn't have any rhythm because I had imitated a woman who was my kindergarten teacher and her song, right? Mm -hmm. And so I grew up with this perception of myself that I couldn't sing. And it's been in recent ceremonies where I'm sitting and I'm actually beginning in my own life to receive songs and noticing how much I love to sing that I received mm -hmm. this message in one of my ceremonies recently where I, I was told I, I am a singer and I have been since the very beginning. But I'm what I'm facing, I think, you know, it's interesting, Cassandra on my south node. That's literally what I was thinking about. And also pulling in that Venusian energy of self-worth yeah, around this. Exactly. And just and I let myself go, you know, to a a retreat that was entirely about learning to sing and claiming the divine voice. And I ended up getting sick and having a very hard time being able to sing. And you know, part of what I recognize is that whenever we're having these transits where layers of unconscious or conscious conditioning via Pluto, via, you know, the archetypes are being stripped away from us, often we struggle and like come up against the same resistance or dynamics, right, in ourselves as a way of it revealing the very part of ourselves that we're working to reclaim that's what I think your um, reflections really elicited in me I don't know if there's anything more you want to say about that yeah I mean and also I think me and you are both have I mean I'm going to give this through my own perception as well we have like these Capricornian dynamics both of us and of course we're talking about Cassandra and Capricorn so it's also those types of what I find whenever I have these kind of big transits like you're speaking about that are unlocking this or I'm being confronted with some kind of like oh what does what is this reflecting like you know um I often think that it pulls in the Capricorn function of not only self-reflecting to investigate especially because it's pulling you into the emotionality of what's going on but also it's as you learn and you gain this wisdom from these experiences, then you get retested again, right? In such a Capricornian way of like self-determination, like, hey, you've been learning about this. And so here's a, a nice little soul test. Yeah. How are you going to choose? What kind of judgment are you going to make about this situation this time? Or, you know, I don't know. It always feels like this 
self-determination test. Um, again, that's coming from my own, you know, evolutionary dynamic of being confronted with that time and time again. And I remember there was a question on the old message board I asked about Capricorn. It had nothing to do with me, but Rad actually answered it and it pertains to this. And I'm like, I feel like I didn't know that I needed to hear that. And it, oh, yeah. hold on. <laughs> One one of the things Jordan is mentioning just while she steps away for a second is um the EA message board. So on the School of EA website, um, there is a complete message board that has been going on for many, many years, which many of the core evolutionary astrologers, you know, um Ari Mosha and Deva and Kristen, like this this was their like little petri dish of learning and evolution and growth and development yes. and there are extended um dialogues and there are lectures from Jeffrey Wolf Green that are posted on there there are, there is a lot of work that is on that message board and i'll put a link to it in the um comments for this video including um a thread that Rad started on the asteroid goddesses where he regularly ha posted a chart with, you know, so much information. And we at the association have taken over the responsibility of managing and moderating the, the forum that used to be on the old message board. Mm -hmm. um, However, the technology that we use on the back end of our website doesn't allow him to post that much extensive content in one single post. So unfortunately, it started pro prohibiting <laughs> him posting everything that he wanted to post, which was, you know, probably such a challenge to navigate. And I haven't really been able to figure out how to resolve it. So he went back to posting them back on the old thread. Oh. Mm -hmm. You can follow it there. Um, you can also see Jordan's post on the undistorted masculine, which started uh, started out that whole huge conversation on Lilith last year. Um, is some of these posts are some of the most you know intensive conversations, and it's really a space of learning. That is one of the yes. things holding the torch of that message board over at the association and giving people the opportunity to bring forward their questions and things like that. Um, yeah. And Jordan, you are definitely an active member and participant in that scope. So I really appreciate you. Your I got the gentle talk. nudge one time and I just was like, okay, here no. we go. I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm just going to ask this. Like, here we go. It's great. It's but, really great. Oh, what I was going to say, I swear, there's like, this TV turns on, like, it's, it's fascinating. Um, random times of the day. Oh, I'm not even gonna go into it. Um, <laughs> I just want to be like, hello, like, <laughs> uh, but, of the Netflix are here. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. What I was going to say, and I think that this is perfect for Cassandra and Capricorn right now transiting because there are a lot of people like I said there's this resurgence of being able to reclaim one's inner voice one clean reclaim one's own self-expression right that is a Cassandra thing to self-express through the voice um as a way to create more inner self-reliance on an emotional level I would say healing that emotional dynamic um but with Cassandra and Capricorn it makes me think of what we were talking about and on that message board I it didn't have anything to do with Cassandra okay um so just bear with me but I remember asking a, a question about Capricorn and Rad saying that Capricorn will give soul tests to be self-determined and I'm going to cuss and these are just his words 
to say, fuck, no, I'm not that person anymore. And that is something that's just like stuck with me. And so here's this Capricorn archetype and we've got Cassandra. And like, I just think of women all over the world right now who are advocating and knees shaking hands shaking being terrified to like say what it is that they need to say but doing it anyway and being self-determined because they don't want to go back in time right they don't want to go back they're being self-determined like and to me it's just pulling in the whole cardinal archetype of just having this courage of just going for it as a way to help the collective have a restructuring process especially in regards to I I think about this when thinking about past lifetimes how often women have had to be the container of holding other people's emotional stuff and then having to suppress their voice and now it's more of trying to create um, equity within this dynamic of staying whole into oneself, especially on an emotional level, while having the courage to speak for their own healing, right? And I just, I mean, I see it everywhere. And that's the nature of whenever you start studying something, you start to see it everywhere, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I can't get rid of it. Like, <laughs> there it is. Well, and it's beautiful. It re it reinforces for me what I've been saying all year relative to Pluto and Aquarius, that the polarity point is Leo, which is about that creative self-actualization. Mm -hmm. And it makes me curious about when she actually leaves Capricorn and enters Aquarius, because there's so many of these transits that we're experiencing right now mm -hmm. that are end of ages, like end of... All of us in this incarnation, in these physical bodies, right, regardless, you don't have to believe that we reincarnate, but if you do, you can know that like, at least for this lifetime, once this is done, it's done. Absolutely. And we're going to see it again in that same way. And to that, it's like emphasizing putting a period on the end for all those voices, for all those women. And I do think this is happening for men, but for men, I think it's happening relative to the reclamation of their emotional bodies and where they, we have not had relationships of safety where emotional safety mm -hmm. and emotional regulation. And Ari was talking about this in a recent video relative to Mars and cancer, you know, like there are things to, for the woman to suppress her voice and for the man to suppress his emotions or whatever. And regardless of our gender choices or dynamics, we all have this in some way where we become conditioned in order to be what we might think as safe, right? Yes. Yeah. And to me, the all reclaiming all these parts of soul, the feminine nature of soul, the natural law, you know, and reclaiming our voice, reclaiming our sovereignty, reclaiming our creative actualization, activating that as a means to express the emotional body, right? These are all the deeper evolutionary healings, you know, and I'd be so curious to see when Cassandra enters Aquarius and when it really becomes like, hmm. or if she I know, Pluto. Uh, oh gosh, I have it written down. It's not going to be for a few more months. I know at the time of the conference, she's going to be at 23 degrees. So, I mean, um, she was, I will tell you a funny story. Um, the day that Cassandra was actually conjunct Pluto and Aquarius is the day that I put together my whole le lecture. Wow. It just, and I sent it to Kristen and I was like, here you go. And she was laughing. She was like, I love that you're a Capricorn, but I'm also like, I feel like I had some guidance here. Like it was just... Um, I was able to like sit down and focus and like everything came in like a streamline, you know, and I was really able to, I don't know, I feel like I'm doing her justice. Um, but I'm definitely still like today I was looking at it and like tweaking some things. Of course, the Virgo in me is like, okay, how can I just improve this or perfect it a little bit more or whatever? 
um, without diluting it with too much, you know? But yeah, that's the day that she was conjunct um, Pluto in Aquarius. I did my whole lecture, my whole presentation. Oh, so. That's so wonderful. Well, we're really looking forward to it. Um, for those of you who are wanting to join us for the conference, Jordan is one of 15 lectures. We have a kickoff panel with many of the astrologers, um, really to bring the community together and talk about current events and happenings in the EA. And then we have amazing lectures, including Jordan's. Um, there's two ways you can register. You can, uh, Sign up for a full pass, which gives you access to all four days. And that, if you want to use the coupon code Jordan, J-O-R-D-Y-N 10, um, you could take 10% off of the full conference pass. Uh, alternatively, if you're just like, oh my God, I want to soak up all this Cassandra stuff, but that's all I want to come for. We do have individual event passes and there's a link in the description to this video. You can sign up just for Jordan's um, class. You'll have access to the live lecture that she does and you will receive the re recording replay with her presentation material. So thank you so much, Jordan, for being thank with you. us on this journey and for your fearless. You know, it's funny, the image that I chose when creating the graphics for your talk is a lady justice goddess mm -hmm. sword of truth and i just and it's like i was like oh is it too much libra but it's perfectly cassandra in the way that you just described your it is voice also to show up and keep integrating these voices of the feminine into your work and to keep evolving yourself as an evolutionary astrologer oh. i really see that and respect that so much about you gosh doing this lecture has been actually really healing for my own Cassandra who's in Sag in the eighth ruled by my Jupiter. So it's, there's been this whole dynamic of even me personally speaking my truth and allowing it to grow my relationship to self without, you know, I don't know being afraid of like the projections or the expectations of someone else. It's through doing this work that it's like, I, this is why I love EAs. Like once you get into something, it starts to take on a life of its own, even in your life, even in your own natal chart. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I find that to be true as well. Well, thank you so much. All right, everyone. If thank you, you want to join us, all of the details that you need to know are in the description to this video and we hope to see you there. I'll see you in your lecture, Jordan, if not before. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.